Dinosaurs are arguably the most famous group of animals to have ever walked our planet. For 160 million years, thousands of different species roamed this earth, dominating nearly every land ecosystem imaginable. From massive long-necked sauropods that shook forests with each step, to agile feathered hunters no larger than a common turkey, dinosaurs were as diverse as they were awe-inspiring. They were an entire world of forms, behaviours and adaptations. Their reign ended abruptly around 65 million years ago, leaving behind fossils, myths and a remaining question. Could they ever re-evolve, and if so, in what form? G'day everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today we're covering how dinosaurs could return and what forms they might take. This is somewhat similar to a topic that I first touched on around two years ago, but where in that video I was asking if, today I want to cover how they may look like. As always, make sure to like and subscribe so I don't end up extinct and let us jump into it. The first thing to understand is that dinosaurs never completely disappeared. When the asteroid struck Earth at the end of the Cretaceous period, it alongside volcano eruptions and climate change wiped out all the non-avian dinosaurs. But of course, one crucial lineage survived, birds. Every crow, ostrich, hummingbird alive today is thought to have been a descendant of the dinosaurs, specifically the group known as Maniraptoran. Birds are hypothesized to have split off during the Jurassic period. They carry unmistakable anatomical traits of their ancestors, including hollow bones and an extremely efficient respiratory system. Although dinosaurs were kind of snapped out of existence, at least a few of them were reshaped, repackaged and survived in a more efficient form for the time. Because evolution does not move with intent or memory, dinosaurs could not return as they once were. As sad as it is, there would not be no sudden reappearance of Tyrannosaurus rex or Triceratops. Evolution does not recreate the past purposely. Instead, it modifies what already exists. If dinosaurs were to indeed re-evolve, it would happen gradually as birds adapted to environmental pressures. Wings might start to shrink as flight became less useful. Bodies could grow longer, tails may lengthen, and teeth never truly lost at the genetic level could re-emerge. Technically, these animals would not be classified as true dinosaurs in the traditional sense, but aesthetically and ecologically, they would be the closest thing that nature could produce. Modern animals built from an ancient blueprint. The modern world may be uniquely suited for this kind of evolutionary experiment. Climate change, habitat loss and human expansion are reshaping ecosystems across the globe. Large ground dwelling animals are disappearing, leaving behind empty ecological niches. Given enough time, some bird lineages could begin drifting towards forms that feel eerily familiar. Not the dinosaurs of the past, but something that would be similar enough give or take a few million years. This phenomenon is known as convergent evolution, a process where different species independently evolve similar traits or features. This situation would go to show that dinosaur-like forms are not a one-time accident of history. The return of these dinosaurs would of course not be announced with roars or catastrophe. It would happen quietly, unnoticed, and slowly in the genetics of birds that already walk among us. What makes this idea even more interesting is that dinosaurs in a way have already returned before, but I say that with heavy air quotes. Long after the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct, evolution did produce some animals that were as close as you could possibly get. One of the clearest examples of this comes from South America in the form of the terror birds. Millions of years after the Cretaceous extinction, these massive flightless predators evolved from birds and became apex hunters. Standing taller than your average person with powerful legs and an enormous skull, they were arguably the closest we ever got. We also had reptiles, which had a crack at world dominance in some very cool prehistoric forms. There was of course the Purosaurus, Titanoboa, and Megalania. Each impressive in their own right, but not quite the dinosaur vision we want. If that was the case, then I could end this video by being happy with Salties, Anacondas, and Komodo Dragons. To understand how this could happen again, we need to look at how much of a dinosaur birds already are. If you strip away the feathers and scale up the proportions, many birds, especially those that are larger flightless, already look pretty prehistoric. Ostriches, emus, cassowaries and rheas are essentially the closest thing to ground running theropods with wings that no longer serve the original purpose. Now imagine a world where the current bird meta becomes less useful. Flight is incredibly energy intensive. In environments where food is abundant on the ground and predators are either absent or too fast to escape by flying, natural selection may favour size and strength over lift. We've seen this happen before with the moa, elephant bird and terror birds. Even the current bunch are all evolved from flying ancestors that eventually lost the ability to fly entirely. And this process occurred surprisingly quickly on an evolutionary time scale. In this scenario, 
scenario, large terrestrial birds such as ostriches would begin to shift in overall body morphology as a direct response to new environmental pressures. Simply, their current body plan isn't doing it. They lack natural defense and they often receive the shorter end of the stick when it comes to predator-prey relations. A more forward-leaning posture common in non-avian theropod dinosaurs would improve running efficiency by lining the animal's center of mass over the hips rather than just the chest. This shift in posture would likely naturally reduce the need for these animals to have a bird-like stance in favor of a more dinosaur-like gait. As balance becomes a greater challenge, evolution would favor a solution already proven effective. This being longer tails. Modern birds possess short, fused tail bones called pygostyles, but they may still retain the developmental pathways required for longer, more flexible tails. Over this hypothetical deep evolutionary time, individuals with slightly longer tails would have an advantage when running at high speeds, turning sharply, or stopping suddenly. The limbs would also change in function. Short and sturdier forelimbs would be favored for balance, maneuverability, and possibly for feeding or display. This mirrors what is seen in many theropod dinosaurs where the forelimbs were not not used for locomotion, but still play an important secondary role. Another important major difference between birds and their extinct counterparts is the teeth, or rather the lack of them. Modern birds rely on beaks, which are highly efficient for many diets, but not all of them. Remarkably, the genes responsible for tooth development are still present in avian DNA. Laboratory experiments have shown that bird embryos can be induced to form tooth-like structures, demonstrating the underlying genetic toolkit has not been completely demolished. This does not mean that birds are on the verge of growing teeth, but it does show that evolution has left the door ever so slightly open to allow for this change. In a situation where changing environment favors diets where tearing, gripping, or processing tougher food provided a survival advantage, individuals with more complex oral structures could be favored by natural selection. Over long periods of time, this could theoretically result in the re-emergence of tooth-like structures, further blurring the line between modern birds and their prehistoric ancestors. So what would these potential bird dinos look like? Well, unfortunately, as I stated in my old video, I do not believe that dinosaurs like the Ceratopsians, sauropods, and chylosaurids, or pretty much anything large and walked on four legs, would be capable of returning through the bird faction. Instead, I think the two most likely forms that could see convergent evolution includes the dromaeosaurs and ornithomimids, which is exactly where we'd be jumping into with our first example basing off the cassowary. If any bird alive today feels one evolutionary step away from being a dinosaur, I would say without a doubt it'd have to be the cassowary. Native to rainforests of Australia and Papua New Guinea, cassowaries are large flightless birds with dense bones, powerful legs, and a temperament that says not to get too close. They are already among the most dangerous birds in the world, being capable of delivering lethal kicks with their dagger-like inner claw. Millions of years in the future, where the current bird build just wasn't cutting it, cassowaries could face new selective pressures. Its environment could favor strength, awareness, and close range efficiency over long pursuits. In such conditions, a more carnivorous cassowary lineage could gain a clear advantage, pushing evolution towards a more active predatory role. Over time, natural selection would favor stronger hind limbs, enlarged grasping claws, and improved forward-facing vision. Wings already reduced would shrink further or disappear entirely, while the forelimbs could re-specialize for balance and stability. With its kicks already being so dangerous, I think it could regain the classic dromaeosaur sickle claw to aid it in hunting. The result wouldn't be a raptor reborn, but a functionally similar predator. Its size would also shift notably. While modern cassowaries reach heights of around 1.7 meters or 5.6 feet, it would actually reduce. A more raptor-like descendant would likely be shorter, but far more compact, standing roughly 1.3 meters or 4.3 feet tall at the hip, with a total body length of around 3 meters or 9.8 feet from snout to tail. Weighing approximately 60 kilograms or 130 pounds, this animal would be compact and more muscular than modern cassowaries. Ecologically, this animal would function as an apex predator, using vegetation to close the distance before delivering powerful disabling kicks. Likely prey would include wallabies, bandicoots, large rodents, reptiles, and juvenile feral pigs. A reinforced beak could shift away from fruit crushing towards tearing flesh, further supporting a carnivorous diet. Competition with other predators such as dingoes would be inevitable, but this cassowary descendant would hold several key advantages. It would have the edge in height, being able to see over dense vegetation, while its agility and powerful kicks would make direct confrontation extremely dangerous. 
Over time, dingoes would likely be pushed towards open habitats or nocturnal hunting, leaving any place where vegetation remained largely dominated by this feathered predator. Though this evolutionary path would be a bit unusual, given enough time and ecological pressure, they could evolve into the closest modern equivalent to an apex raptor. I would go ahead and call this species Struthio venator. While the spec Evo cassero represents a path towards predation, this ostrich example shows how birds could evolve into dinosaur-like forms built for speed rather than just combat. Ostriches are already the fastest two-legged animal alive, being capable of sustaining high speeds across open landscapes. In many ways, they already closely resemble ornithomimid-like dinosaurs, including Gallimimus, which likely filled a similar ecological niche during the Cretaceous period. The key driver of this evolutionary path would be environment. As grasslands and semi-arid regions expand under climate change, open terrain becomes more and more common. Natural selection would favor ostriches with longer legs, lighter builds, and more efficient muscle and respiratory systems, pushing them towards an even more specialized running body. Their diet would also reinforce this trend. Gallimimus and its relatives are believed to have been omnivorous, feeding on plants, insects, and small animals. Modern ostriches already share this flexible diet, allowing them to thrive in harsh, unpredictable environments. Over time, their beaks could become narrower and more specialized, their necks longer but more sturdy, and their body increasingly streamlined for constant movement. Their movement would become more reliant on their thighs, favoring the increased length of their tail. In terms of size, these gallimimus like ostriches would remain tall but refined. Adults could stand around 1.9 meters or 6.2 feet tall, with a body length reaching around 4 meters or 13 feet from beak to tail. Despite their size, they would likely weigh less than large modern ostriches, being around 100 kilograms or 220 pounds in weight. Ecologically speaking, these animals would function as highly mobile omnivores, feeding on grasses, seeds, fruits, insects, and small vertebrates. Rather than going ahead and fighting lions, they would almost entirely rely on early detection and sheer speed. Adult individuals would be extremely difficult for lions, hyenas, or wild dogs to catch. Over time, possibly these runners could become dominant in Africa's open plains. They wouldn't just resemble dinosaurs in appearance, hopefully they could fill in the role they once held. This species would be called Struthio cursor. Now these are just two of the speculative routes birds could take if we were hypothetically imagining them to evolve into a similar form to dinosaurs. But there could be many more, and I for one would be interested to cover what type of forms the predatory birds such as eagles would end up taking. But with that, we have reached the end of the video, and let me know in the comments if you would like another part going into the details about what each continent's main bird could end up looking like. And as always, I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. See ya, mates.